In this video, we're going to continue looking at how to graph rational functions. So let's go ahead and start with example three. We are told f of x equals x over x plus three minus one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my vertical asymptote. And I do that by setting the denominator, which is x plus three, set that equal to zero and solve. So for my vertical asymptote, I have x plus three equals zero which means x equals negative 3. So that's my vertical asymptote. And I'm going to graph that with a vertical dashed line through negative 3 on the x-axis. So there it is. Now, this one's a little tricky. We have to determine, is there a horizontal or is there a slant asymptote? And we do that by focusing just on the rational part of this function, x over x plus 3. The degree in the top is 1, and the degree in the bottom is 1. So since the degree in the numerator is equal to the degree in the denominator, I do y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. And so my leading coefficients are 1, and one. And so I have a horizontal asymptote, y equals one over one, y equals one. But that is not my horizontal asymptote, because that's just the horizontal asymptote of this rational function. We are also subtracting one from that value. And so I have to drop down this minus one, which means my horizontal asymptote is actually located at zero y equals zero and so i have a dashed horizontal line across really the x-axis here which means i do not have a slant asymptote since i have a horizontal so none for our slant and so now we're going to go ahead and find at least one point to help us out and I always go for the y-intercept to help us out. The y-intercept occurs when x equals 0. So I have 0 over 0 plus 3 which is 3 and then minus 1. So 0 divided by 3 is 0 minus 1 is negative 1 and so my y-intercept occurs at negative 1 and so I'm going to plot that point. And that tells me that my graph will be down in this area and then up in this area. And again, I like to go and use the idea of reflection. Since this point to go to the intersection of the asymptotes is over to the left, one, two, three units, and up one, I'm going to go one, two, three units, and up one. And I'm going to reflect it to get this other point. And then I'm going to go to my calculator. And I'm going to plug in my function. I'm not going to use the new operating system. I'm going to use the old one. So I'm going to put my fraction inside of parentheses, this whole fraction. My numerator is just one term x, so I don't need to worry about a parentheses for that. Divided by, here I have a binomial, so I'm going to put that in parentheses, x plus 3 inside of a parentheses. Now this first one closes this one, so I need to insert a second parentheses to close the fraction, and then type in my minus one. And I'm gonna go to second graph to get my table. My vertical asymptote occurs at negative three, so I'm gonna grab all the points really to the left of it, and then I'm gonna go back and grab to the points to the right of negative three. And I'm going to use those to assist me with graphing them. So let's start to the left of negative 3. I have a point at negative 4, 3. So here's negative 4. I'm up at positive 3. Uh, negative 5. I'm at negative 1.5. And I can see I'm going to go all the way to negative 9. I'm at 1 half. I'm at 0.5. And so when I graph these, I'm going to graph them with a curve, and I'm going to approach the vertical asymptote, but never touch it. 
and I also have to go to the left. I'm going to approach the horizontal asymptote but never touch it. So at negative 2, I am at negative 3 as well. At negative 1, I'm at negative 1.5. And at 3, I'm at negative 1 half. And so I have now I have a good enough amount of points to see the curve, come and approach the vertical asymptote, but don't touch it. And same thing in the other way. Approach the horizontal asymptote, but do not touch it. And so there is the graph of my rational function. X over X plus 3 minus 1. Let's go on to one more example for this. This one should be a little bit easier. I have X plus 4 over X minus 1. First thing always is I find the asymptotes. I start with the vertical because it's the easiest one to do. Set the denominator equal to 0. x minus 1 equals 0. x is positive 1. So x equals 1 is your vertical asymptote. So I'm going to grab a dashed line and I'm going to go a vertical line through positive 1 on the x-axis. Next, I determine does this graph have a horizontal or a slant asymptote. And we look at the degrees in the numerator and denominator. So the degree of the numerator is 1. The degree of the denominator is 1. So the two degrees are equal. So I do y equals for horizontal asymptote the ratio of my leading coefficients, which is 1 over 1, which is simply y equals 1. So I have a horizontal asymptote through the line y equals 1 which means I do not have a slant asymptote since I have a horizontal. So I'm going to write down none for slant. And again, I try and find one point, an important one, with the rational function, and that is the y-intercept by setting x equal to 0. So if I set x equal to 0 here, I get y equals 0 plus 4, which is 4 over 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. 4 over negative 1 is negative 4. So I have a y-intercept at negative 4. And then I do reflection. I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units into the right one. So go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units into the right one. And you'll have another point on the graph. And then we go to our calculator. So I'm going to go to y equals. I'm going to clear out what I have. Now I'm going to show this both ways for this example. The old operating system, you're going to put the numerator parentheses, so parentheses x plus 4, close the parentheses, divide it by, and then put the x minus 1 inside of parentheses as well. With the new operating system, I'm going to go to y2. I will hit alpha y equals, choose the fraction, and then I just type it in the way it appears. An x plus 4 on the top, hit the down arrow, and then an x minus 1 in the denominator. And I don't need to worry about the parentheses at all. That takes care of it. So I'm going to go over and deselect this y2 so it only graphs the one of them. So if I hit second table, remember our vertical asymptote occurs at x equals 1. So I'm going to grab points to the left of it. I'm going to go back and grab points to the right of it. And we're going to use these to help us with graphing. So here we go. To the left of it, I have 0, negative 4 already marked. At negative 3, I'm at negative 0.25. So at negative 3, I'm at negative 1 fourth. So there's that point. At negative 4, I'm at 0. At negative 1, I'm at negative 1.5. So negative 1, I'm at negative 1.5. And so I have four points. I can see my curve, which works. Let's grab this one. At 2, I'm at 6. At 3, I'm at 3.5. At 6, I'm at 2. 7, I'm at 1.8. I can see my curve here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to come down here, approach that vertical asymptote with the curve, but never cross it. 
come back and approach this horizontal asymptote with a curve, but never cross it. And the same here. I'm going to come down with the curve, approach the horizontal, but never cross it. I'm going to go up with the curve, approach the vertical, never cross it. And so there is my graph of my rational functions. So I find my vertical asymptote, determine if I have a horizontal or a slant. I graph them with dashed lines. I like to find the y-intercept first. That allows me to use reflection to find another point and then go to my graphing calculator's table to get the rest of the points to sketch the curves of the rational function.